true crime podcast is shedding light on a series of murders that terrified Atlanta for more than two years. And now, almost 40 years after the killings, questions are being raised about whether the right person was convicted. Watch. It was a string of kidnappings and murders that paralyzed a city. Atlanta has another murdered child. Approximately 29 African-American children, teenagers, and adults were found dead in Atlanta from 1979 to 1981. They became known as the Atlanta Child Murders. Finally, in 1981, 23-year-old Wayne Williams was arrested and charged with murdering two of the adult victims. A year later, he was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. After the trial, law enforcement linked him to 20 more of the 29 murders, yet he was never charged. Williams has maintained his innocence throughout, and now some say there may be reason to believe him. Joining us now, the creators of the new podcast, Atlanta Monster, Donald Albright and Payne Lindsay. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. So this, it's such a disturbing case. You just look at the sheer numbers of those who were murdered. But the question remains whether they were all committed by the same person, uh, because the man in prison now has only been convicted of two of the adult murders. So what first got you interested in this pain? To, I mean, you, you weren't really, you were even alive when this was going down? I was not. I was born in 87. I'm okay. an Atlanta native, and I'd never heard of this story. And I'm 30 years old now, so I was born five years after all this happened. Mm -hmm. uh, my business partner, Donald, mentioned the Atlanta child murders to me in passing one time. And I'd never heard of it, so I looked into it and realized how much this sort of shaped the city of Atlanta and how important this story is to, to tell to the new generation and to not forget. All right, so tell us, why did they believe this man committed these crimes? Well, they're, they're basing it off of one night where he was caught on the bridge and the cops heard a splash. They were doing a stakeout. They were trying to catch this serial killer who was killing these boys. And the cops heard a splash and they stopped his car on the bridge and ever since that point, they followed him around and they, they learned that he was a talent scout who was recruiting kids. And they kind of pieced together the puzzle and he became the Atlanta child murderer. Now, the, the, the podcast gets into how Williams, when he got pulled over, you know, they, they were staking out there waiting under the bridge for like something happened. Something did happen. They heard the splash. They pull him over and they said the first thing he said, they said, you know, why I pulled you over. And the first thing he says is what? He says, um, it's about those kids, isn't it? Right, so that's, I mean, if you're, the sheriff is like, okay, what? <laughs> right, that's what, you, yes, as a matter of right. And then he, he launched into coverage of, uh, criticism of the press coverage. Channel 6 is getting it right, but Channel 11's got it all, right, all wrong. Right. Now, of course, any sheriff's gonna be like, I think I got my man. Right. And right. then there, there was forensic evidence that tied him to the crimes, right? It wasn't just circumstantial. The biggest thing they had was fibers. And this was like the very beginning stages of them ever using fiber evidence. There was no DNA back then. Mm -hmm. But they had these, these hair fibers and these carpet fibers found on victims. They were able to link to Wayne Williams. And it was never completely definitive. Um, you know, it was back then, it was a pretty strong case. But today, it would probably be a little more questionable. Mm -hmm. The truth in this case is, is it's really simple. It's not complex or anything, but it's just that it's the truth that people may not want to hear. And it's the truth that they have to hear to understand what happened and, and it continues to happen. Well, that was Wayne Williams, who is currently in prison serving two life sentences for the murders of two adults in Atlanta nearly 40 years ago. We are joined once again by Payne Lindsay and Donald Albright, creators of Atlanta Monster a new podcast that raises questions about the killings and whether or not Williams committed the multiple murders that have been ascribed to him, only convicted of two, but, but treated as though he committed all of the Atlanta child murders, which would total 29? Yes. 29, okay. So how many times, because you, you were put in touch with Wayne Williams, and that's how we have that tape. How many times have you spoken with him? Ooh, several dozen times. Um, off and on for three months, uh, several times a week, sometimes multiple times a day. What's he like? He's, um, he's very interesting. He's, um, he's very charismatic. He, he's very polite on the phone. He's also a, a very fast talker, and he kind of um, likes to steer and control the conversation. Mm -hmm. The thing is, um, Donald, this is not a uh, Wayne Williams Innocence Project. Correct. This is a question about whether the Atlanta authorities rushed to judgment on all of these crimes, which they had good reason to want solved <clears throat> ASAP. Right. I mean, you got to think about it. This is uh, Atlanta, Georgia, 1980. It's in the South. 
We we're only 15 years removed from civil rights legislation. And, you know, the city as a whole is uh, going through a change. He's the first black mayor, first black police chief. And um, it's already a racial, a racial division within the city. So the next thing you know, these, you know, black kids are starting to go missing and found murdered by the dozens. And immediately two sides separate and there's no real middle ground of trying to find out what actually happened. Mm -hmm. It was really like, how do we get past this as quick as possible so the city can continue to grow? There was some report. There were some reports that the KKK may have been responsible for some of these murders. It was right. all African American children, mostly right. children, um, and so there was never official proof tying him to the remaining 27 cases. Right? It was an it was an assumption, a belief. Well, there was no conviction. He was convicted of two adults, and so it, you know, my reason for looking at this case at all was that I talked to several family members who, of victims in this case. And they've all told me at this point that they don't think Wayne Williams did it. Right. And that to me was a good enough reason to look into this. They never got that closure. Do you believe Wayne Williams is a murderer? You know, I don't know. I don't have all the information yet. And that's, that's why I started this project was to, to figure that out. Right. And we're only halfway through now. And it's, uh, it's a hard thing to figure out. Yeah, the whole okay, but, argument but when way, he, once he went to jail, the murder stopped, right? Yes and no. Yeah. Um, you know, the FBI hangs their hat on the murders stopping. But um, the bottom line is that there were kids murdered the next year and the next year. Unfortunately, it, it, it's happening. Did they the follow the same pattern? Because these kids were asphyxiated and uh, they, they were African-American. Uh, they tended to be within certain ages. Did they follow the same pattern? The biggest change was the pattern. Right. There was definitely less kids who were murdered by asphyxiation the next year. But to say that all the murders stopped just yeah. isn't quite and true. The pattern actually isn't that clear within the first 29 either. You know, they, they may share some similarities, but there's a lot of differences within those, those crimes as well. So we don't believe that any one person or group committed these 29 murders. Well, what's fascinating is, as you point out, some of the family members of the other victims want a hard look taken at the case because yeah. they're not Wayne Williams fans. They just want to make sure that the actual murderers have been held to account in all of these cases. I want to tell our viewers that we did contact several law enforcement agencies. The FBI deferred to the Atlanta police, who said they have no open investigations. Fulton County Police Department also says it has no active investigations. And DeKalb County Police uh, telling us that their five Atlanta child murder cases that they had are suspended, suspended, not closed, and that they will respond to any new information. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Uh, you can hear more of Payne's interview with convicted killer Wayne Williams when episode five of Atlanta Monster drops tomorrow. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.